I'm talking about the Bungles. I'm talking about the Chiefs. I'm talking about Arrowhead. And since you're dragging your feet, I'm going to say it. It's the Chiefs winning this one, 23 to 21. It does appear that the bookmakers have kind of finally figured out the fact of what we've been pointing out for years on end. The Chiefs ain't great. They aren't, uh, they, they don't house anybody who comes into their house. I think the Bengals really eager to get a win here, a little bit banged up at pass catcher and otherwise. I do think the Chiefs are going to win it outright, obviously. I think it's going to be tight. I'm taking the points. I think the Chiefs are going to score more points. I also think Joe Burrow is going to go over one and a half passing touchdowns. Some juice attached to that. Hench, how say you? Uh, you know, I have been saying all summer, Bengals under 10 and a half. Bengal, the, the, the Bengals do, do very little for me. Uh, by the way, <laughs> that's the first time I've ever had a season-long win total cash in week one. You lost at home to one of the three worst teams in the league. You're not you're not winning 11 games, obviously. And they go to 0-2 this week, and it's not close. It's a double-digit victory, 30-20 to 20 if the Bengals get one late. Um, mm. I, you know, the, the Chiefs beat a very good team on opening night, and, and the, I don't think the Bengals are in the same class. This mm. thing of, like, the Bengals always start slowly. It's like, yeah, well, these games count. Um, and so being a uh, own two is, is going to be problematic and maybe you need to take care of business in week one uh, against the weak sister because you're going to Arrowhead in week two. Like, so I don't know if that means you have to play in the preseason or you have to pay your star receiver, but like, it's almost like, was the plan to be Owen two? Cause we always start slow and that's, that's okay. You know, and, uh, and in the division, I mean, I, you know, Spaghetti and I have the Steelers going to the playoffs and mm -hmm. that looks a little smarter this week too. So I just think this division is going to separate in into the the Ohio's and the others. I, I think that, that the Bengals and Brownies are 3-4. Boy, I, I, I mean, I'm really stunned by your cynicism about Joe Burrow. You know, he didn't play basically all the last year. So what you do have to look at, in my opinion, is 2022, not the way the majority of last season went for that team when they fared pretty well with a backup QB. Um, yeah, the Bungles, I do think, but the Ravens should obviously take care of the Raiders and then they're sort of back on track. We'll get to the Steelers and the weird reaction to their road win that included zero touchdowns, what it all adds up to. Eddie Spaghetti, let's hear your pick on Chiefs Bengals, a big one in the standings. By the way, I said the Spaghetti last week and I'll say it again now. You know, I hate to be this doom and gloom for the other uh, 15 teams in the conference. I kind of feel like if the Chiefs win this one, they lock up the the number one seed. I know injuries and stuff can happen, but who's going to take them down if they have head-to-head -head wins against the Ravens and the Bengals? The Bills might be in, the, in play there, but that division's rugged. Anyway, Spaghetti, I'll say you. Well, it's funny you bring up the Bills because the rhetoric I've been seeing lately after the uh, the Bengals lost to the Patriots, and, and kudos to your, your fellows in Foxborough there, Hench, but it, that game, like, the beating them the way they did, people were like, oh, Josh Allen gets all this hate, gets all this criticism, can't get over the hump, and, like, Joe Burrow kind of skates by. Why is that? Because the team has struggled in check. You're right. He missed a lot of last year. No preseason. Everyone's saying, oh, like, week one really is, like, the third game of the preseason. But it's also the same thing for the Chiefs. Like, the Chiefs didn't play much in the preseason either, and I think they will just continue to get better. Pacheco runs so hard. Rasheed Rice, despite what he did in the offseason, he's legitimately, like, going to be a great receiver in this league, uh, in, my, in my opinion. And plus, like, their defense, you know, Lamar Jackson extended in place with his athleticism that I don't think is really matched by anyone maybe outside of like Anthony Richardson I don't think Joe Burrow ha can do what Lamar Jackson does and I think Justin the Chief Fields defense... uh like, I'm gonna I'm gonna That's stick just with Anthony Richardson on this one um <clears throat> all that being said I have the Chiefs winning by a touchdown here I had them uh, I have them winning 35 28 over the Bengals I think the Bengals will be okay they will be they will get back to kind of normal but I, I think the Chiefs uh, I'm I'm not dumb enough to keep picking against the Chiefs anymore they're they're the better team here all right, but talk about dumb. How about always going against the team that always shows up in Arrowhead, the one team that does, the Cincinnati Bengals. You fellas are on the wrong side of history, and we'll see that by uh, by nightfall. 
on Sunday. Next up, it's the Niners paying a visit to one of the two Twin Cities in Minnesota. The home team is plus five. That number has actually dropped, I assume, with the CMC news. It doesn't sound like he's going to play. CMC says he expects to play. I bet you that the Niners are not going to let him run out there um, in a week two game, sitting at one and oh. Total is 45 and a half. I say it's the Niners going in there and leaving with a 28 to 20 to win. Um, I'm going to go over 232 and a half pass yards for Brock Purdy. In the last 11 games, he's gone under 232 and a half only three times and 230. So right at that number in week 16 last year and uh, six days ago. Uh, 232 yards right there. Other than that, he's blowing past that number. I think you can safely play that one. Justin Jefferson, six touchdowns in his last 11 games, plus 140 to get a JJ touchdown here. That feels like a good play. Hench, how say you? Oh, I got so burned by the C-Mac news. You know, I overreacted. I I went Jets under. It's going to be, you know, the 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 Niners are going to struggle to move the ball, having forgotten that it literally never matters in the Shanahan offense who he's turning and handing off to. That guy that you've mm-hmm. never heard of, gashes Elijah Mitchell, Mason. It, 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 he just whoever it is starts gashing the defense for eight yards a pop. And you know, I watched it and I was like, oh right, it it, it, it doesn't matter. Next man up, and and the Niners are the Niners now. I think this one is going to get out of hand. I have it 34-17 Niners because even though they got they got pushed around, I actually I I, I thought Rodgers made some really nice throws, some not so great throws, but to our summer long conversation about their upgrade at quarterback is pretty obvious and I think in the next 2 weeks against the Titans and the Patriots, you're going to see a Jets team that's actually on its way to the playoffs. Um but so the Niners go from a very good team that they blew out to a team that blew out the worst team in the league. So suddenly like the Vikings are moving way up in class and the Niners are moving way down in class. And it's like, I can't see any formula where the the Vikings are forcing any three and outs. Like how do you, which, who do you take away? So I I think that's a, that's going to be a romp uh, in many for the Niners. Well, I'd love to see that number pre-Sam Darnold in New Jersey week one. I mean, the Niners would obviously um, be a heavier road favorite here. I, you know, shout out to O'Connell. This is my ongoing thing, as you know, is the coordinator, the offensive whiz matters more than the guy. That's true of Shanahan, and it's true of O'Connell, too, it would seem. Look at the work he's done. I mean, it's from Josh Dobbs. It's not just Kirk Cousins. Um, so he can work some miracles with Sam Darnold, by the way, just coming off of a stint under the, uh, the watch of, uh, Kyle Shanahan. I think generally speaking, like we talked about, they're going to be a little bit better than people expect. The Niners though, are the real deal. Spaghetti, how say you? I had the Niners winning, uh, by eight here. I haven't the total going over as well. I have the Niners winning 30 to 22. I mean, look, uh, Sam Darnold was great. Let's go back to the Vikings first. Like uh, what? Five incompletions, two touchdowns. Aaron Jones was put on on the ground. Uh, when you look at the receiver statue, you think, oh, wow, the Giants must've done a good job. I know Jefferson did have the touchdown, but four for 59 Addison three for 35. You're like, oh, those are pretty pedestrian for those two guys. Didn't matter. I mean, like, like Hench said, the Giants are probably the worst team in the NFL. They rolled them over. Doesn't matter in this game probably not because i i was a very big believer in the jets i still am i don't think the jets really kind of changed my view in them whatsoever but the niners are just that good there really is no hangover for the niners it doesn't matter if it's jordan mason doesn't matter if it's cmc doesn't matter if it's one of us behind that niners o-line with the niners like the the game plan on the rushing attack shanahan knows what he's doing debo is like such a great player to have such a like diverse player whether he's behind purdy split out wide there's just too much going on with this niners offense they're a phenomenal team it's, they're going to be in the final four uh for sure and that's why i do have them uh winning the super bowl this year because uh, i think they're just that good no matter what happens to them so i had them winning by uh, a touchdown and a two-point conversion all right i was going to do another game here but rogers keeps coming up so let's address it in the here and now jets heading down to nashville tennessee titans a home dog plus three and a half at the time of this recording 40 and a half i say the jets win it i think the titans i i'm not jumping in late i thought the titans were a little more interesting than some people did than some people had them it's not going to amount to a playoff run or anything else, but 
they're not a garbage team out there right now. Jets win it 21 to 20. Here's my vote of confidence for Aaron Rodgers. He's going to go over one and a half touchdown passes, even money for that. Number 12, that seems like a good play. Hench, I'll say you. Well, I was singing your praises for half of that that Bears Titans opening game because I said, you know, Sheck was right. Sheck to all summer, Sheck talked about the Titans and they're not as bad as people think. And then that game was so crappy and boring. I think we only have eight screens eight screens, eight, eight boxes for the games. And there were a ton of games in the morning window. So the bears Titans game got pushed off. I don't think we had the Cardinals bills on. And so it was like, so it was like, all right, get rid of that game, put a good game on. And then by the time the Titans bears game made it back onto the big screen, it was like, what the hell happened? How did the bears 24 points? Caleb must've started cooking. No, 93 yards passing. Uh, well, what happened? Uh, here's a Will Levis highlight that that you, he might want to forget. So I was I was a believer in the Titans. I had them week one. I picked them in my in my total wins league where you draft teams, and I had to draft a crappy team toward the end of the draft. And I was like, oh yeah, my crappy team is going to bank a win. They basically can't lose this game. Smash cut twenty. You know the Bears have, have run off you know three touchdowns without without an offensive touchdown, probably the first time that's happened in the NFL, 17 point deficit, no offensive touchdowns, you win. Um, so I'm off the Titans. I think the Jets win by 10, 27, 17. And I like your, your Rogers prop a lot. I also think, you know, again, back to what, like I said about, you know, 60 minutes of evidence, it does kind of feel like it's getting late early for some teams and for some guys like Will Levis with Mason Rudolph sitting there, I, I, I'm not under any delusion that Mason Rudolph is Josh Allen uh, waiting in the wings. But if Will Levis throws another game away, you can't, it, which he just straight up did in the fourth quarter at Chicago, they should have won that game. Or, you know, obviously at least they shouldn't have given the other team a, a seven point uh, shot there in, in the fourth quarter. Um, they'll yank Will Levis, I assume. And at the same time, the Jets can't put another stinker out there. It's excusable against the Niners machine. They have to hold up their end of the bargain or then Salah starts to take on more stink with each passing week. And I do think Rodgers would be inclined to point fingers like we're taking care of business. Where's the defense kind of thing? Anyhow, it is a big spot. I do think the Jets at least get a W and can move on to week three. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? I, I think, you know, they're the out of the four worst quarterback performances what we just saw this last week and i think that game the titans bears game had two of them i think dale jones you could probably throw in bryce young as the other bad one will levis just looked completely like like he was not ready for nfl football does not go through his progressions rolls into sacks i mean his he was had actually had a worse rating than caleb williams didn't caleb williams didn't even eclipse 100 yards passing um the titans offense is not gonna be very very good outside of really tony pollard who had a fairly nice game uh in this one but i think the jets defense will be better the offense they're they're playing now with the Titans is not nearly as dynamic as the 49ers offense. So I think they'll, the defense will get right back on track and the Jets offense, Brees Hall didn't have that great of a game. I think he'll be a big factor in this one. If you like props, I mean, the Garrett Wilson over on receptions because uh, Rogers clearly loves him. And I think Rogers, obviously, again, not a lot of preseason action, a lot of snaps in the off season. Uh, I think he's just going to get better as weeks go on. I think the Titans are a very, very easy team to beat here. I have the Jets winning this game big 27, 14. I think, see, that's I, not to parse your words. That's the thing I don't think that the Titans are is an easy win. I think, I mean, starting with Jeffrey Simmons on when down, they you can't score points, you're going to be an easy win. Well, touche. Okay. But I, I just mean they are a rugged, they have some pieces that beat Sheck, the hell out of you real physically. Quick, but Sheck, go ahead. Real quick, real quick, yeah. Shaq. How many yeah, yeah. games have we done? I don't know. Let's move on to the Saints and the Cowboys. And how much time have we used? Like I'm helping my daughter with SAT prep. And it's like, if you've uh -huh. given 40 minutes to answer 30 questions and 25 minutes have elapsed and you've answered three questions, you got to spend a little less time on each question, right? Okay, let's go. Let's was that, go. Was that Good like a reading God. comprehension comprehension portion of the SAT? Circle back on the same yeah. game. All right. Well, I'm going to circle. I'm going to circle back to America's team here. Alleged though they are, they're playing host to the New Orleans Saints. I that was the jaw dropper when I saw that score flash across uh sitting there in Atlanta watching that game. Like, wait, the Saints are up. How much e yeah, poor Panthers fans. 
Um, Cowboys here laying six and a half at the time of this recording, 46. I say that the Cowboys get it. I am not awed by the Saints beating the the very sad um, Carolina Panthers. 29-19, and this is an Eddie Spaghetti special that he pointed out. Dak Prescott over 10 and a half rush yards. He'll do that. He's going to take off with the ball at least once or twice. He's going to get into double digits there. Congratulations on the money. Hench, how say you? You know, I think the perception is that the Cowboys whipped a decent team opening day and the Saints whipped a terrible team. I think the Cowboys actually beat a bad team on opening day with a bad quarterback, obviously. So yep. I, I think these these teams, uh, that number is a little too big for me. I think the Cowboys do win 27-24. Um, you know, obviously, I'm not a Derek Carr fan, but they do seem to have a lot of weapons suddenly. Like, there are guys getting open deep and you know Kamara had a really nice first game um so I think they keep it close Eddie Spaghetti how say you uh that was a very impressive win uh, in my opinion by the Cowboys there I'm gonna have them win this game 33 25 uh, I just think the you know the end of that game too Deshaun Watson for all of his nonsense going on was just like bruised and battered bloody all like he was rubbing the blood from his hand on his pants like Demarcus Lawrence and company and, and Micah Parsons they were getting after him and uh obviously turning him over too which the Cowboys are very very good at and I I just think the Saints like what you said Shaq beating the Panthers to me doesn't really do much it was a great game if you're a Saints fan Derek Carr finally looked pretty good he was very efficient in that game but um Dak doing what a lot of quarterbacks didn't do last year which was throw touchdown passes on the Cleveland Browns defense uh I think Zeke had the most prototypical 2024 Zeke game 10 carries 40 yards and a touchdown I do like a Zeke touchdown prop because he's going to be the goal line guy that's going to feast um but yeah the, the Cowboys uh nice win they're going to win this game too all right let's move on to this next one and uh Hench gets the honors here um, because it is his team and they're one and oh, and I want to gauge his level of optimism. The Seahawks are paying a visit from the Pacific Northwest portion of football America. The Patriots at home debut Jared Mayo, all the rest of it. A home dog plus three and a half total is a meager 38. Hench, start us off. Um, that's that's funny. I've got the I, I've got it at exactly 38 because I think the Seahawks win 21 17 and cover that three and a half. The good news week one, you know, we we're all wondering, you can kind of tell uh, how hard a team plays for a coach. I think that was true in Arizona last year, um, you know, with Gannon, you could just tell they like playing for him. And that first week was great for the Jared Mayo e e era in terms of like, they want to hit and they want to, you know, they want to be snot knockers for a guy who is a legendary snot knocker himself. Uh, so that's super encouraging. Um, the Seahawks, ultimately ended up covering which was interesting because they played awful and they and you know two safeties that that game you know the defense must have been looking at the offense like hey offense you can't keep giving up points on offense um I do think uh, and I know uh, what's the latest on Kenneth Walker spaghetti uh checking there right now I'm not sure if he's but I, I you know Charbonnet is a, a, a very solid back and, and, you know, I know, I think we all like the Seahawks this year and uh, I think the defense is good. And I think, uh, I don't think the Patriots are going to be two and no, I, I, I like I, the Seahawks. If I, if I, I, I think that's kind of what I've been getting at the last 20 minutes or however long we've gone. What is it more like 57 minutes hench? either way? Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely not. I, I preach what you thought in August, stand by it largely pivot off of injuries and such, but for the most part, stick to your guns, have some confidence in what you thought preseason. And definitely one 60 minute chunk is not going to swing me. I think the Seahawks are the superior team here. That's what I'm riding with over everything else that we saw in week one there. I'm going to say the Seahawks get it 23 to 17. Eddie Spaghetti House say you. Yeah, quickly, Kenneth Walker update did not practice Wednesday. Uh, Thursday will remains to be seen, but they said he's iffy for the game. Then, yeah, Charbonnet would be the backup there, which would be a big blow to them because Kenneth Walker was absolutely amazing. He was the one bright spot of that Seahawks offense. Uh, I have this game. This score now is a lot closer than I would have been. I think that late, like Bo Nix, garbage time touchdown, 
the Seahawks had that game in hand and, and what the Patriots did versus the Bengals, who we all thought was going to be a good team, a playoff team. Uh, they they really contained them. And I think a 24-19 Seahawks win. But uh, again, this score would have been a lot different, uh, you know, outside of that game last week here. But Kenneth Walker is a big deal for this team. Uh, if they do lose him, I mean, they have plenty of weapons on the outside. But Geno Smith is not having the same magic as he had a couple seasons ago. I think they need if they had a quarterback upgrade, this Seahawks team would be for real. We disagree on who Geno Smith is at this stage in his career. Speaking of quarterbacks, people love talking about the two that Pittsburgh has. No one is quite sure if they add up to one solid starter at the most important position. Both of them, I assume Russ is going to make the plane. At, I mean, he he wore a uniform on the sidelines in week one, even though he wasn't able to. He was He was inactive, you understand, but he wore his uniform. I mean, what the hell? I, I I mean, I guess I could spin that in like a C. That's kind of C. That's who he is. I mean, just weirdo behavior, but all right, whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I'm more concerned about what my eyes see versus what other people who I think are credible watchers of football are seeing. Guys we've had on this show, guys like Trey Essex, Pittsburgh Steelers offensive lineman says, oh no, you got to go with Russ when Russ is ready to go. What? What? Mark Cabali says, oh, there's no controversy. When Russ is ready to go, he's your number one. Yeah. Again, like I said about that other team, what it, who who do you guys think Russell Wilson is? He's not Josh Allen, you understand. He's a 36-year-old man whose best days have been proven time and again to be in the rear view. Justin Fields helped win that game, but with deeds specifically doing things with his legs, that Russell Wilson is incapable of doing. What do you think that Russell Wilson could step in there and do to offset the physically dynamic plays that Justin Fields provides? Keep in mind, it's a dominant defense. I don't think the Falcons, again, react to 60 minutes all you want. I told you before the season, I thought that defense was for real. I don't think the Falcons are in a lot of trouble. Yes, it was a little weird watching Kirk out of the gun the entire game. I think that that team is going to come together. I think it was more a real strong performance by a real strong defense in Pittsburgh. Now they get a rookie in Bo Nix who was checked down Charlie in week one. That should mean victory. Obviously the Steelers going on the road against teams that they should beat it has been a plague for Mike Tomlin Two offensive linemen for the Broncos in jeopardy for this one total 36 and a half. The Broncos at home plus two and a half second row game for Pittsburgh, a Nice spot if they can get to two and zero with two road wins right out of the gate. I say they do it twenty to sixteen. Hench, I'll say you. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be that close. I don't. I don't really see how the Broncos move the ball against this excellent defense. I have it. Steelers twenty three, Broncos thirteen. Um, I said all summer that Justin Fields should be the guy, regardless of Russell Wilson's status. And and the reason I said that is because we know Russell Wilson is in his decline phase. We've seen. Russell Wilson's ceiling is going down every day. We still don't know what Justin Fields' ceiling is. Um, so find out. And, and uh, you know, now it's come about because of this cap injury. But it's funny, like, if you look at political history, you just look at election matchups, which candidate is in their ascension and which candidate is in their decline phase, you know? And so it's obviously, like, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama. I would say even Trump in 2016 was a comet on the scene Whereas Hillary was like, Jesus, again, with this old lady, like, how long has she been here? And, you know, and now that's flipped. Like, you have a super crazy old man who's been running for president for nine years against a, something new that you don't know what her ceiling is. And it's like, Justin Fields, like, he just gives you things that Russell doesn't give you. And the stuff that Russell does give you isn't that good. So, I mean... I said in I said, you know, that my thing was the Steelers are going to be three and one and they're going to have to bench Russell. That was my prediction for the season. Like they're going to go like he's not good, but we keep winning. Now they're already at the QB. They should have been at, you know, it, it, theoretically all summer. And uh, and I love them this week. And I like spaghetti. I picked him to make the playoffs. And uh, I think at two and oh, we're going to be feeling pretty good about that pick. Well, at the time of this recording, full disclosure, there are not uh, props available that I can find for Justin Fields because we don't know yet that he's 100% the starter. I do think he gets it, and I do think that he puts up a hefty rush total. 
And yeah, to your point, like the plus virtues of Russ at this point are uh, are the are the deep throws, but that's Justin Fields' virtue too. I mean, he threw some lasers to George Pickens over the course of the game. You know, a little slow out of the gate. And by the way, keep in mind they are hamstrung by Van Jefferson as a starting wide receiver in 2024, and he was not just like a zero; he was an actual deficit. If you go back through that game, which of course I have um hench i mean uh spaghetti how say you on this one i i see the quarterback thing completely different i mean i watched every snap of that game i had a lot of fantasy guys uh, that were relevant in that game and plus i you know with my predictions of the steelers being very good i, I was really interested in this this tough what i thought was gonna be a tough week one matchup i mean the falcons didn't belong and the game script kind of went to what i thought steelers like choked them out defensively uh tj walk a couple great plays obviously a late pick i think i said that last week in our predictions I, they're going to win this game with a late pick pound the rock with Najee, and i just don't think justin Fields in anything to prove to me that he's an NFL quarterback. He, he plays a position, uh, but it wasn't even like his legs got him to eclipse like the 100 yard mark. He still had less rushing yards than Najee did. Um, but, you know, for a quarterback, five yards a carry is like it, when you had 14 carries, it, it, I thought his yards would be way more. And I, I just feel like if Russell Wilson was in that game, uh, from what I watched, yes, he's not as uh, he's not as athletic as Justin Fields. He can't spin out of the pocket. But like I said before, Will Levis and Daniel Jones did a plenty. Justin Fields rolls into sacks and he and he rolls into trouble and he doesn't find the open receivers. I think R Russell Wilson's brain is just that much better as a like a quarterback that he can see the field and make plays when you have a guy like George Pickens who had a fairly good game. Uh, I just think if if Russell Wilson was playing that game, you guys would have won. You would have scored an offensive touchdown. You would have won by a bigger margin. And I think it's going to happen again this week. Uh, even with Justin Fields in there, the, the Broncos' offense is absolutely miserable. Um, so I have them the the Steelers winning this game twenty five sixteen. Well, listen, he, I mean, now to Hench's point, you know, it's Fields who has the sword of uh, Damocles or Damashek hanging over his head. And when he screws up, then they'll flip to the savior, the would-be savior, Russ. One thing I will say that I was right about, at least for the first game of the year, TJ Watt, dominant. Mm -hmm. I mean, unblockable and all the rest of it. And what were the Falcons doing to try and slow that down? I'm not quite sure, having watched it now a couple of times. Um but my point is, I think, right. The guy, the Jenga piece of the Steelers defense, the guy you cannot remove and from the equation that really screw things up is Joey Porter Jr. He eliminated Drake London. Drake London was a zero in that game. Look for that going forward and see how regularly Joey Porter can just eliminate the top pass catching option of the other team. Obviously that will uh, benefit the Pittsburgh Steelers greatly. Let's go across the Keystone state. Now Atlanta Falcons, Kirk and company trying to get on track here. Eagles. We told you the Falcons toughest slog was the first three games of the year. They just need to get to one and two and it's clear sailing. Can they do it up in Philly Eagles lay in six and a half total 47. I think the Falcons do it 24 to 21 Hench. How say you? Whoa, this is not a garage I thought we would be in. But I also like the Falcons outright, 30 to 28. Um, you know, lost in 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 Saquon tra trampling the Packers was I did not think the Eagles defense looked good at all. Jordan no. Love left a ton of points on the board. He missed a bunch of guys, and it just looked like the same that looked like the Eagles defense that the Buccaneers blew out in the playoffs. I saw no sign that anything had been addressed. I thought the back end looked bad. And so, you know, it's a, it's an interesting, again, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins faced a really good defense in week one, and that's not the case in week two. So uh, if, if Kirk Cousins can't move the ball against the Eagles, we'll know the Penix draft pick was genius because it, because Kirk's cooked. Um, but I do think that, that Bijan and London, get get untracked against uh that Eagles defense. That was weird watching Kirk not really seem to firmly plant that foot for the for the full game there. I do think in the Eagles defense's uh defense because I said that I think the Eagles defense was going to be a real uh unit of strength this year. They're young on the back end. I think they'll round into shape and be better at the end of this season than they are right now. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Oh, yeah, I do agree with that. The, the back end definitely did struggle. And I do think that, I mean, clearly the Falcons playing the Steelers defense is a lot tougher than this Eagles defense. But uh, Friday game, Brazil, you know, the field conditions were bad. There were some highlights on the uh, Eagles defensive side too. Zach Bond had a great game. Jalen Carter uh, did have a couple of mistakes, a couple of flags, but was pretty dominant. That being said, uh, Kirk will look better. 
but not enough to win. I have the Eagles actually winning 38, 26 that offense. Um, I mean, Saquon, this is the, the giant's nightmare of how good he was. And, and, uh, you know, Jalen hurts looked pretty good for a guy that didn't play uh, much in the preseason either. AJ Brown had another big game. I, I just think that this Falcons team, uh, I, I don't get why, uh, this, I believe in this offense. It seems like, you know, more of the same, what we saw last year and the Eagles, I did have them winning 13 games. I think this is uh, another big win for them. And I thought Jalen Hurts threw some real stinkers over the course of 60 minutes. Obviously, he had his flashes too. And and Shaq, and I'm doing. I, I know I'm 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 breaking my own rule because I'm circling back on the same game. But got to give credit where credit is due. All summer, Shaq was saying, "Is the assumption that they'll just do the tush push with a different guy?" And it looked ragged. Like you know, you're like, you'd see him come out in tush push formation. And you'd be like, "Uh, you should hand the ball to to 26." Like I don't. What are you? What are you doing? Like this, this is a, it, it was even the, the one they converted, he needed to get slammed in the back. Like it, it, it's not the same. And it's different too when it's, I mean, how many times did the tush push fail in any situation? Like literally how many times did it fail in 23? And if you knock that down by like 10%, at least you're not doing it on third and three like they were last year. They would just tush push it when they were anywhere close to the to the sticks on third down that you remove that from the quiver then the offense obviously becomes a little bit different all right a guy who made zero plays in week 1 at least when the game was still in the balance Sean Watts now there was some news on Deshaun after the game shocker um who could have seen this one coming oh me i told you what do you think it's over because they signed him like well that's the end of all allegations from now until the end of time, obviously there are going to be more people coming forward. Now they have Browns fans. It's not on you to defend this, but it is on Haslam. It is on Andrew Barry and Stefanski does not want to seem to acknowledge reality, which is he should be playing the backup Jameis Winston instead of Deshaun Watson, who just looks absolutely cooked by the way, uniform nightmare matchup. The Browns with the brown and the orange playing the Jags with the teal and the gold. Ugh, throw up. But I am going to watch it because it's interesting. The home team Jags laying three. 41 and a half is the total. I'd say the Jags get it. 27-16, as we pointed out, defenses that are great one year do not necessarily transfer over to dominance the next year. Why that is, there are some uh, hypotheses out there. But the fact of the matter is Browns did not dominate the Cowboys in week one, I think the Jags at home show out. How say you, Hedge? Same garage. And, you know, it's funny. Deshaun Watson took a lot of time off and came back and sucks like John Stewart. He's pretty much exactly like John Stewart. Like John Stewart, previously good and is now terrible. Deshaun hmm. Watson is, is he a top 30 quarterback in the NFL? Like at this point, he's not, he's not top one on his team, as you just pointed out. Jameis would would be giving them a better I mean he makes bad choices bad throws he doesn't seem that athletic to me when he does break the pocket that you know so and they I you know they're getting further dinged guys guys hobbling off important pieces not playing and you know as you've pointed out defenses don't don't bring it year over year necessarily and I think it's a snowball effect I think when the defense knows our quarterback sucks they get worse. And so I, I agree. Jaguars cover 27-20. Yeah. And you have no Nick Chubb reminder again. Mm -hmm. And and you know, it just it when you hear these dominant defenses talk about it, it's diminishing returns because it is just too much pressure on that unit. Like, and we have to win every game and maybe throw in a couple of points too to help <laughs> to help the case a little bit. It's too much to ask. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I was a big believer in the the Jags this season. I thought they would give the Texans a run for their money in the the AFC South. That was a game they probably should have won. But you look at the box. I mean, like Trevor Lawrence, twelve twenty one. Like, what are we doing? Like, this is the you're you're supposed to be like the number one overall pick, like one of the best QBs of the generation. And he hasn't really shown that. I guess the positives, the two headed rushing attack with Etn and Tank Bigsby's nice. But the the Jaguars loaded up. They drafted Brian Thomas, Evan Ingram, a nice year. Like they signed Gabe Davis. They have the weapons, and they just couldn't put it together in a game with you know not a you know all world defense and the Dolphins. 
Browns defense a lot better than the Dolphins defense, but I do agree with you, Sheck. They did show some cracks last week uh, with Dak and company, and I think that we'll we'll see it again here too, basically because the offense is not good enough to stay on the field, and I think the defense will tire out, and the Jags have enough talent. They will get by. They're going to win this game 29-22, and uh, everything will be all right in Jacksonville. All right. I think, you know, we well, obviously not a 15-minute pregame style show, but I do think to Hench's critique in advance, we did pace it up here a little bit. If you want to throw out one or three more games, Hench, the floor is yours. I'm looking at Bears and Texans as a compelling one, Bucks and the Lions, NFC Central throwback game, Buffalo and Miami on Thursday night. Maybe we should make that our last one before we ran, round it out here. Matter of fact, I'm going to make an executive decision here. Bills, Dolphins, Dolphins lay in two and a half here, total 48 and a half. Hench, I'm going to ask you to pick this one. Well, obviously, if Etienne doesn't fumble, uh, the Jaguars win that game outright, as I said they would uh, prior to, to week one. So was, this, is a, this is a real... But he did fumble it, though, right? Like he did that, fumble that, it. If, he, uh, if it hadn't after, happened. After not fumbling last year. Um, but I was going against him in fantasy, so it wasn't... Oh, I, I didn't mind that much. But uh, so... Um, did the henchmen he, win week one? You beat Simmons? Oh, my God. The henchmen won everything week one. I won oh. in my VIX league. Both my fantasy teams won. I won money. I'm the big winner. So um, both these Good teams, Dolphins and Bills, also won week one, but in uh, kind of uninspiring ways, right? They both seem very flawed. Uh, it's weird that the Jets lost and the Bills and Dolphins won, and yet there were signs – that the Jets might win that division. But anyway, I think the hmm. Dolphins get right. I mean, I think they win this game pretty high scoring, 30 to 24. Uh, Bills, you know, that ball was on Dorch's shoulder pad at the end of that Cardinals-Bills game. The Bills could have lost that game 35-34 very easily. Um, and uh, And I think they do lose this week. I mean, quarterback league and all of that, and Josh Allen is doing – the most dragging of his team of anybody out there, Mahomes or anybody else. Um, and talk about pressure. I mean, he, he has to do everything, you know, he has to do it all or they don't have a chance. You can able to do that for another year. He did it the entire back half of last season. He's got to do it again. I'm on the dolphins, man. I'm not jumping off. I know they're banged up at running back spaghetti. This game, I'm going to be... take. I'm going to take the Dolphins by uh, to to cover the two and a half. That's what. I, that's uh, my pick on this one. Yeah, I I think this game is going to be a very very back and forth game. I do agree it's going to be a high scoring game. Uh, the Dolphins, we just talked about the Jaguars game. Like they they probably shouldn't have won that game, but they did. Uh, maybe it was you know they're fired up for their teammate Tyree Kill with all that nonsense going on. Their offense still clearly very dynamic. Two, it looks like one of the few quarterbacks that you know the the preseason rust didn't really show. Um, he still was doing his thing there. But I think I do think the running back injuries will play a part. And I also think Josh Allen, we're talking about him. Like if this Bills team gets inside the twenty yard line. And it's just like all bets are off. Like he's going to find a way to score. Uh, I, you know, there's the ongoing joke in the fantasy world with like James Cook. And he's like begging for touchdowns because that's just Josh Allen's territory. Like whether it's him shotgun, roll around trying to find a guy who's open or he's going to take it himself and just bulldoze you. Uh, I think what's going to happen is the the Dolphins are in the lead. Uh, Bills get the ball. Josh Allen does his thing. They can win this game 31-28 Bills. So Bills uh, on the money line, not even taking the two and a half points that they're getting. I think uh, Josh Allen magic wins this one. All right, before Hench leaves, let me just say quickly, uh, the other one that I circled as a game like season ain't over, it ain't must win in week two, obviously. But Colts and Packers, I mean, man, you don't want to be 0-2. And, and they got Malik Willis running out there for the Packers and the Colts. That's a shameful loss if you lose to Malik Willis. I'm fascinated to see. How do you think that one turns out, Hench? I, I think the Colts truck them and I think the Colts are pretty good and and that, you know, uh, uh, they, they obviously played the Texans tough week one. Um, and, and I don't, you know, I, Malik Willis getting thrown into the fire and it's like, look, all you have to do is throw it as far as you can. I'm going to protect the football. I'm going to take a sack on the final play. Like just throw it as far as you can. What do you, you have one job anyway. <laughs> I think that uh, I, I think that one actually is a blowout for the Colts, 27-10. And then the last game I'll throw out just to make some money, people. Let's make some money. There is no way the Raiders are staying within double digits of the Ravens. The Ravens 
<laughs> long single lead. digit, right? Yeah, you, you know that they're, right. they're they're not they're not yeah they're not going to keep it to single digits. The Ravens on a mini buy essentially, uh, uh, you know, while the the Raiders were just getting pushed around by the Chargers, um, you know, physically dominated. Uh, and and you know when when Lamar Jackson breaks the pocket, he's not going to run out of gas like J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins looked like he hadn't been on a wind sprint in three years, and and of course he hadn't without getting hurt. But that that was a hilarious sixty yard run because he was gone, and then at the forty yard mark, it was like he hit Heartbreak Hill in a marathon. I I figured I thought he was hurt again. I was like, oh my god. He's his hamstring is gone. It's like, no, he just hasn't run that far in years. But uh, the Ravens will take it all the way to the house. Oh, uh, I, I love that you did that. I, I I so want to go against you and take the Raiders here because Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby and the rest of it, uh, again, we perceive the Ravens to be like, oh, you're, you're a little soft. You don't want to have to play Baltimore. They're a little soft up front themselves, if you didn't notice that in, in week one. Um, Justin Matabike defensively aside, they're not they're not beastly like they what like we think the Baltimore Ravens are. Watch out for that one. All right. Um, well, that said, if Isaiah Likely has size 14 shoes instead of size 15, they're one and oh. I get it. Okay, last thing before you go. I, I but if you want to go, like if you want to slap Eddie Spaghetti in the face like this, that's your business. The Giants and commies ain't even worth your time. Oh God. Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I I'll say this. It's JV. If you want to just leave it to me and spaghetti, will, you can go about your this. business. You know, I I was the last uh Daniel Jones. I was the last guy on that island. Like everybody was leaving. I think spaghetti and I were the last two for about eight months. And I just like him, I guess. I I I you know. It's hard to watch a guy like David Carr, your buddy, you know, it's just hard to watch a guy have a defender in his lap on every play that he's supposed to be developing. He's supposed to be like getting better and making decisions. And obviously at this point, the, the, the nurturing learning curve of Daniel Jones career has been destroyed by getting hit. Like most notably in that like 40 to nothing loss he was still on the field, like in the rain, no linemen. And it's like, he's just, he's obviously, ne it's never going to happen. Um, on the other side, uh, Jaden Daniels, completely intriguing player after week one. Uh, so I, I, I think the commies uh, take it and cover 28-20.